Hello and welcome to another TLDR Explains video. This one's going to be another one on China, and it may seem a little weirder than some of our previous videos on the country. That's because this video is specifically about China's secret deal with the Vatican, and might explain some certain anomalies in the Catholic Church's recent behaviour. If you're also interested in some more traditional deals, we also have a whole series of videos about the deals that countries have with the European Union over on the TLDR EU channel. That's linked down below. Next to that link, you'll also find a playlist with all of our China videos in. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of videos for you to watch. So let's start with some China Vatican context. When the Chinese Communist Party came to power in 1949, there were around 3 million Chinese Catholics. The CCP never really got on with the Vatican because they saw it as somewhat colonial, likely not helped by the fact that most bishops in China were European, not Chinese, and the Catholic Church was often seen as, if not incompatible, then at least in tension with the Communist Party's teachings. It only took until 1951 for the two to sever diplomatic ties completely, after the CCP accused a priest of planning to assassinate Chairman Mao just because they found some old non-functional bits of a 1930s mortar outside of his house. So the CCP cut ties and set two conditions for the resumption of diplomatic relations. One, that the Holy See, the governing body of the Catholic Church, was not to interfere with religious matters in China, and two, that in line with Beijing's One China policy, it break all ties with the Taiwanese government. Anyway, the Holy See did not agree with these conditions, so diplomatic relations weren't resumed. In the meantime though, life for Catholics living in China became tough. The CCP started exiling bishops loyal to Rome, and appointing their own bishops who were loyal to the CCP, without approval from the Pope. In 1957, Mao also started the Catholic Patriot Association, which essentially tried to take Catholicism under state supervision, and assimilate religious and communist practices. This forced Chinese Catholics to start their own dissident underground Catholic Church, which stayed a bit truer to traditional Catholic practices. Anyway, this is sort of how things have been for Chinese Catholics ever since. They've had to practice their religion secretly, and without the traditional Catholic structure, in large part because Chinese Catholics don't have bishops who've been approved by the Pope. To give this some context, typically Catholic bishops govern over a geographical constituency known as a diocese. They derive their authority within the Catholic Church from the fact they've been approved by the Pope. However, under the Chinese system, this didn't exactly work. In 2018, there were 70 bishops who were recognised by both the Vatican and the CCP, 30 who were recognised by only the Vatican, and 7 who were only recognised by the CCP, meaning that some dioceses didn't even have a bishop at all. This meant that if you were a Catholic in China, you likely didn't know who your bishop was, which meant that there wasn't much structure to Catholicism in the country. Now, you might notice that seven is actually a remarkably small number of bishops who are not recognised by the Vatican. This is because the Vatican actually retroactively approved most of the CCP's bishop appointments, mainly to make life easier for Chinese Catholics, and only withheld approval for the most blatantly party political appointments. Anyway, even if the majority of bishops were recognised by the Vatican, things weren't easy for Chinese Catholics. So in 2018, the Vatican and the CCP signed a provisional deal to try and sort this out. Basically, the deal said that the Vatican would approve the remaining seven CCP-appointed bishops and approve any future CCP appointments, but that the Vatican would retain a veto. There were also some other provisions about the limits of Catholic practice in China. For example, children under the age of 18 aren't allowed to undergo any religious instruction. Basically, they're not allowed to attend church at all. Now, this is starting to look like a pretty bad deal for the Vatican, and it certainly doesn't help their religious growth in the country, which was already very slow. There were 3 million Chinese Catholics in 1949, and today it's only 10 million. Compare that to the Protestant population that's grown from about 1 million to about 60 million today. In fact, a 2016 report estimates that with natural losses, the Catholic population is actually shrinking in China. And if children aren't allowed to undergo religious instruction, there's absolutely no chance that the Chinese Catholic population will remain stable, let alone grow. 
Also, even the bishop part of the deal doesn't seem to have worked. Only about half of China's 98 dioceses have bishops in practice, which means that life for Chinese Catholics is no less confusing than it was before. And it also appears that the Vatican doesn't want to use its veto at all. The point is that it's hard to see what the Vatican actually gets out of the deal. In practice, it guarantees the slow death of Catholicism in China and gives the CCP complete control over bishop appointments. So what could be worth that for the Vatican? Well, it's hard to know because, and this is difficult to believe, the details of the deal are actually completely secret. Two years on, and the Vatican still hasn't disclosed the actual text of the deal. The most obvious answer, though, is money. In June of this year, Go Wengi, an exiled Chinese dissident, claimed that the CCP pays the Vatican $2 billion a year. This is somewhat unverifiable, but it certainly makes sense. The Vatican generally keeps its finances pretty secret, and the most recent published data is only from 2013. But documents leaked to the Wall Street Journal suggest that the Vatican ran on a deficit of $70 million in 2019, representing 23% of its $300 million annual expenditure. The Wall Street Journal also saw a rather desperate letter from the Pope to Cardinal Reinhard Marx in May of 2019. Basically, the Vatican's finances are a bit of a mess, not least because they've had to pay out nearly $4 billion in lawsuits over allegations of clerical sexual abuse over the last 10 years or so, which means that the church certainly needs money. Equally, China have a history of using financial power for political ends, see their extravagant loans to Africa and Pakistan. So it's not beyond imagination that the CCP might be paying the Vatican for their cooperation. Again though, the $2 billion figure is yet to be verified, so it should be taken with a pinch of salt. Whatever the CCP are giving the Vatican in a deal though, it seems to be working. Not only do the CCP now have control over the Chinese Catholic Church, but the Vatican and the clergy are conspicuously pro-China. In 2017, while the deal was being negotiated, Pope Francis claimed that Catholics in China can worship freely. Then, in January, he praised China's great commitment to contain the coronavirus outbreak and sent hundreds of thousands of medical masks to China as a goodwill gesture. Then, in March, after both Taiwan and China donated PPE to the Vatican, the Vatican only thanked China for the donation. The point is that the Vatican has taken a suspiciously deferent tone to the CCP, given that as recently as July, Chinese Catholics were being told by the state to replace depictions of Jesus with Chairman Mao. What's probably even more remarkable than what the Vatican and its affiliates have said is what they haven't. When the Vatican issued prepared remarks on July 5th for Pope Francis's blessing at St Peter's Square, it included a message for the people of Hong Kong saying the current standoff requires courage, humility, non-violence and respect for the dignity and rights of all. I hope that social and especially religious life may be expressed in full and true liberty, as indeed several international documents foresee. But in the end, the Pope left this bit out when he spoke, deciding not to endorse the Hong Kong message. Even more glaring is the Vatican's silence on the Uyghur concentration camps in Xinjiang. You might expect the Catholic Church, as a paragon of virtue, to take issue with what looks like a modern genocide, but they've been remarkably silent about it. Again, whatever the CCP are giving the Vatican, it's got to be pretty good if it can get them to stay silent about a genocide. What do you think though? Do you think there's something suspicious about this secret agreement? Or do you think it's sensible of the Vatican to keep the CCP on side? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release new videos. A special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name listed at the end of the videos just like these people, then be sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.